My name is Robert. I run a Dungeons and Dragons campaign on Wednesday nights. This week we had the normal two players. The other two normal players couldn't make it this week, but we had a third person show up who played a couple weeks ago and decided to come back. We had a fourth person that was there last week as an observer and then right before we got started, three people walked in and wanted to know if we had room in their, my game for them. And yes, we had room. I had some extra character sheets from people who have come in and out of my campaign. And they took the character sheets and decided to play them. Uh, two of the three were fairly experienced. And then one was kind of new at it. So, to begin the game, they found themselves on the main continent of Hoth Pem, about a week's journey north of Shinshiren, which is a major city. Has a population of eh, 80,000, give or take. The city is built on 13 different islands, 10 of which were built magically by an ancient race. The walls are smooth. And the, the barbican, besides having a drawbridge, has runes that they can cast a barrier on to keep the water out. The tides in this area generally range between 14 feet and a negative 14 feet, give or take. However, because of the three moons, two, three times a year, the tides can get up as high as 40 feet and as low as 30 feet. And those are when they put a barrier up in addition to raising the drawbridge to keep the water out of the various islands of the city. When the party moved south, they came upon a pile of orcs and humans on the side of the road. One wanted to do burial. And the party said, we can't waste the time. We don't want to let anybody know we've been here. So the cleric gave basically the equivalent of last rites to all of them in the pile. The ranger found footprints leading away from the pile, but the party chose not to go there. About a day before they got to the city, the ranger, hey, I can go hunting. He had good, good die rolls. He got a nice fat deer. When he brought it back, they were trying to figure out how they were going to get the meat to travel. Someone suggested jerky, but that takes a while. You got to have the right equipment, you know, cooking the meat. And then the new player of the, of the three, she suggested does anybody have a create or destroy, remove water? And the cleric goes, I have remove water, destroy water. Boom, they had beef jerky and the hide was dried out. I thought that was a really good use of the spell. Very creative. The next day when they went to the city, they crossed the 500 foot bridge to get to the main gate of the first island. And throughout the bridge, there are sections where the guards can split the uh, floor into two and create a bit large opening, slowing down the advancement of anybody crossing the bridge. Plus, when they get to the drawbridge, they went managed to go through that. It was down at the time. The tide is was quite low. I think it was down about negative seven or eight feet. They had to go through two crystal cylinders. The crystals would glow a blue, a green, or a red 
depending on the type of magic that they had on them. And the item that they had would also glow. Yeah. So some of them had a variety of different colors glowing, and depending on the severity or the level of magic would determine which one was on top of the crystals. They went through the first island, which has a path about 20 feet wide with big hide walls. So you can't see on the other side, but you can definitely hear practicing going on of sword fighting and maybe some jousting and such. It's about 1,500 feet long. They went through another gatehouse, crossed a short bridge, went through a gatehouse to get into the other city. I don't think I told them about the second gatehouse. Oh, well. They found an inn. They, there was no bar fights. They heard some, but they got quickly shut down. They were really appreciative to have a bed to sleep in and to have something other than stew. The next day, they ventured out into the city. One guy went looking for arrows. He found himself a Fletcher. One of the other persons says, oh, you're kind of looking for an aerosmith. We thought that was a pretty good joke. He didn't know what he said, but we thought it was a pretty good joke. Some of the others went to a library to do some research on a variety of different things. They kind of broke into about three different groups, all looking for different things. They went their different ways for lunch. That afternoon, they went different ways. One of the characters found a merchant looking for guards because he was taking a caravan south, which there were rumors that orcs and bandits had increased their activity in the southern part of this region. And they heard of the orcs having a slave sale in the southern part of this region. So the merchant was having a hard time finding people to go with him. The party decided to join the caravan. When they started the next day, they realized that he had basically doubled the number. There was a total of seven wagons. Four wagons had merchandise. One was a covered or carriage for him and his niece to travel. One was an ice wagon that kept things cold using magic. And then the last wagon is the cook wagon. They set up camp and toward the end of the first night, they spotted several bandits off in the distance, kind of scoping them out. One of the uh, characters has a bow that allows him to cast dancing lights. And as soon as he did that, the bandits kind of scattered out. One of the char other characters went out to search and ended up getting hit by a bolt. Uh, basically, he was out there by himself. All eight bandits that were checking him out took a shot. Only one was able to hit him. And so next week, we're going to see what they end up doing with that. Thank you for listening and watching the video. Please hit the subscribe if you enjoy it. And I will see you next week when I give you the next Wednesday night RPG wrap-up.